the amount of shorts in the market is at a historical level. We have not been this short since 2007. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100. We're going to take a look at the IWM, Russell 2000, the dollar, the VIX, the bonds, piece everything together so everyone gets a holistic view of what's going on in the market so we can make the best decisions moving forward. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. Put on the bell notifications. It helps everything a lot. And without further ado, let's get started with the video. That is the issue currently. Okay, so but I'm assuming that's going to be taken care of by June. The debt ceiling stuff. Once there's um, once the debt is inc once the debt ceiling is increased, there's going to be more supply, and that means that the price of the market should increase. Now, the next question is: Okay, how much higher can we go? Regardless of whether we're going to continue going on higher after the debt ceiling increases, or is this move upwards now? the market just um is the market just uh pricing it in now that's another thing to take into consideration we don't know for sure but what we do know is that there is a record level of shorts okay so i painted the picture 
this is what's going on over the next few weeks. And we know that June is generally a red month. Okay. So yeah, so we looked at that. All right. So now what I want to look at is this chart. So we see that in 2008, uh, we had a major short, right? Very similar to what we have right now. And then, uh, oh, sorry, a few months before 2008 and a few months before 2012. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what happened before 2008. So we can see that we came to this low, we bounced a bit, and then we fell lower again, and then we bounced higher. So this is going to be very important. So we're going to look at the monthly chart for 2007 heading into the last few months of 2007, okay? All right, so like I said, this is the monthly chart of the S&P 500. This is a few months before 2008. And what do you know? In May, we had a very green month, very strong month in May right here. June ended up being red. July ended up being even more red. September uh, into August, we ended up falling much, much lower. And then we ended up bouncing intramonth. So this was a time where this was the first point where we uh, fell lower and we began to bounce because um, basically uh, as the price um, fell lower, obviously not as many people are going to be shorting. People are only going to be shorting it into resistance. All right, so we fell lower. That's when we got that little spike up and then we ended up falling lower again. Uh, once price, sorry, once um, the equity prices bounced. So we could see that 2007, right before 2008, we um, fell here, heading into June. Boom, bounced back up. Um, in October, we reclaimed this high, but we didn't get a close above. So this is the monthly chart, right? We got, we broke above uh, the high from July, but we didn't get a close. And then this basically marked a major point of weakness. And then that is when we started to really really fall heading into the end of the month into the final quarter and uh we, we know what ended up happening afterward uh the market just really really fell very very dramatically from this point on <laughs> obviously the market fell over 40 50 percent so um this was back in 2007 okay all right, so I hope that made sense. This was that first point. This was back in 2007. We saw what ended up happening. People were very, very net short, and we saw what ended up happening in the market afterward. All right, so that was 2007. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a look at the monthly chart on the S&P in the last few months of 2011 because, um, yeah, that was basically the only other time we were this uh, net short, okay? All right, so let's look for 2011 in the S&P 500. And what do you know? Wow, is this May of 2011? We had another red month where it's like topping. We, uh, wow, this is, this is very interesting. Very, very interesting stuff. So basically, towards the last few months of 2011 as well, this marked a, um, a top and the market ended up falling much lower afterward. Now, it's not going to be perfect, right? We could end up um, falling. No, we, could, we could end up going a bit higher first, right? It's not an automatic reason why it's going to fall automatically, right? But we could see that uh, in May, we fell. We ended up getting a big bounce into the uh, last part of the year, right? But we never reclaimed any of these highs until the beginning of the next year. So technically, right, things can go a bit higher. And um, definitely the last um, few months of summer were not good for the market back in 2007 or in 2011. So that is also basically what I'm assuming. The market in general, where we are right now, should be falling. We have a record number of net short in the equities market as well as the bond market. And that is not a good sign um, for any of that. So when we're taking a look at the chart here, we see the aggregate net speculative positioning in U.S. Treasuries. We're at an all-time low. We're, this is 
the most we've been short ever. So this is not a good sign for bulls at all. And um, <clears throat> we should be falling lower. And uh, this, is, this is not good. So I hope looking at bulls, two things, you know, back in 2007, we just looked at 2011 and look at how low we are currently. Just piecing the things together. This is not bullish. All right, now is the time. Now is not really the time to start looking into going long for a longer term. Now is the time to be buying into longer term puts. Okay, so I hope this information uh, helps. So before I take a look at the S&P, we're going to take a look at the NASDAQ and the large tech stocks because the majority of this move has happened because of mega cap tech stocks. So um, right now, currently, we can see that the NASDAQ is painting a bearish uh, candle here at a level of resistance. We're very, very overextended to the upside in terms of the Bollinger Band. We opened and closed outside of the upper level of the Bollinger Band. That is showing extreme overextensions to the upside. And generally, unless this holds 335 or 334, unless this holds this area here and bounces, but the bounce needs to happen fast. If it does not happen quickly, then uh, what ends up happening is we should come back and retest at least 330 on the NASDAQ. And the reasoning for that is because the other tech stocks are showing topping patterns. And now let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right. So number one, first of all, let's take a look at Apple. Apple on the daily, this is not a bullish chart. This is, I mean, this is not a bullish setup at all. If you're trying to go long and you're like, wow, this is really, really bullish. Like this is a red candle. Okay. So we gapped up and then we fell lower intraday. Interesting news for Apple is that they're not allowing ChatGPT, which is Microsoft, to uh, have their product on the App Store because Apple wants to release its own AR product. So they're not allowing uh, ChatGPT on theirs. So that's also had to do with uh, why Apple popped up a bit. But this is not bullish on Apple. Okay. Take a look at Google. Google is also an AI company. It's getting a lot of uh, love for AI because they're making their chat GPT competitor, which is better and free uh, compared to uh, chat GPT. So Google, this is not a bullish pattern. This is a very, very bearish pattern, a bearish candle at a level of resistance. We overshot, failed. This is not, this is not a bullish setup here. This is not good, right? Microsoft doesn't look as bad, but it's not breaking above any levels of resistance. Okay. So we took a look at all of those. Now let's take a look at uh, the chip stocks. So NVIDIA, similar, it's not breaking above. But when you're looking at it in terms of the Bollinger Bands, we're very overextended to the upside. Again, similar to the NASDAQ, opened and closed outside of the upper level, which is showing extreme overextension. AMD, also not really showing strength, but this is these stocks are still holding support. So... So the NASDAQ, the, the chips, they need to really, really like make a bounce very quickly or this is going to start tumbling down. The weakness is going to uh, pull the market back. But essentially, you know, these tech stocks are starting to show topping patterns, specifically Google and Apple. They are not helping the cause for tech bulls. OK, so now that we took a look at the NASDAQ, right? We could quickly just take a look at the IWM, the Russell 2000, right? It looks absolutely garbage. And it's, this is also not helping uh, the bullish case at all. All right, just very, very simply, this is just not bullish. Uh, this is not what you want to see as a bull. Uh, we need to see these levels of support hold though, 175. We need to see NASDAQ 334, 333 area hold. Um, and then we could get a bounce maybe, but generally this is just not, a major beautiful level to go long on all right next let's take a look at the s p 500 all right so clearly right 420 is a major psychological level of resistance on the s p 500 okay uh one thing i want to show you guys is that there is a gap to fill on the s p at 421.25 so we could end up going a bit higher filling that gap and then we could end up seeing 422, 423 area overshooting a bit, but 
it's just it's just similar to basically real quick just similar to what happened on amd right we overshot we made another leg up and from this leg up once everyone starts to become bullish how much more room is there so uh once again you know we shot up overshot back in march once people start going along how much more room is there and it's a very similar setup on amd right now how much more room can we go to the upside that is going to end up just being the question now so 420 once again major support level we could end up filling the gap to the upside but just in general now is really really not the time to be going long in my opinion now is not the time to be going long now is the time to be scaling into longer term puts we saw that speculative shorts are at historical highs and um every time that this happened generally the next few months were very very bearish we saw this with 2007 we saw this with 2011 and the same concept is happening right now banks and hedge funds so just banks and hedge funds right so for now for the month uh we're up 0.65 percent for the month Okay, we're actually, I mean, yeah, it didn't update. Sorry. So we're up 0.65 for the month, all right, on the S&P. And if speculative shorts are at an all-time high, or at historical highs, right, banks and hedge funds do not want to go short into weakness, right? They would rather be shorting into strength as the market is showing strength, as there is enough liquidity to go short as the market goes higher. They want a better price, right? So this is a perfect situation. It would be even more perfect if after the debt ceiling, we end up going a bit higher as well and hitting uh, into, you know, the mid 420s into 430. At that point, it would be a disgusting, disgusting short in my opinion. Um, but regardless, we're at historical shorts. We have to just understand from the perspective of billions and billions and billions of dollars, you don't want to go short into weakness. You want to go short as the, as the market is showing strength. You want to be going short at levels of resistance. And um, these would be the levels of resistance to do it at. And um, just in general, the risk reward for longing is just not there at the moment. So just the numbers, all of the data, everything is in our favor. So there's that for the S&P 500. We haven't even taken a look at the VIX and the dollar yet. All right. So let's first, let's go ahead and take a look at the VIX and the dollar. All right. So the VIX obviously doesn't look like they want to bring it below 1550 on the VIX. Um, we can end up bouncing here. So the VIX is starting to look a bit bullish here. The SPY is starting to look bearish at levels of resistance. So the VIX, if, unless we really, really break below uh, this 1550 level, I would be surprised, but the VIX looks like it's going to continue up higher here. Um, and then let's also take a look at the dollar, right? So the dollar also like is showing strength. So we know that the dollar has an inverse relationship to the market. If the dollar is bullish, that means that the overall market is bearish. So we can see that the dollar is clearly doing really, really well. On the daily chart here it's showing some strength and um that is not what bulls want to see so the dollar is doing really well and uh we could see that it was consolidating here for quite some time and now it's in a breakout so the dollar is showing some strength the vix is also showing some strength we can continue showing some strength into um the debt ceiling and then a bit afterward but the fact that we are at historical levels of net shorts it's not a good sign and um last but not least i want to take a look at the international markets so this is just going to be icing on the cake so the german markets are very very overextended to the upside here and we can see that it's really overextended to the upside in terms of the upper level of the bollinger bands this is not a sustainable move, in my opinion, on the German markets, the Japanese markets as well. This is not a sustainable move. When things are very overextended to the upside, it generally should not continue up. 
Okay, so this is also not a great move. Um, things are very overextended here as well. And then when you look at the UK markets and the Chinese markets, we're not seeing extreme strength. So this is the FTSE 100. And then this is uh, the Chinese markets. Uh, we're not seeing extreme strength. So to piece everything together, the tech stocks are showing topping formations. The candles are not bullish. We're at historical levels of short. Uh, the bonds are at historical levels of short as well. Um, we can take a look at the bonds. So we can see that the bonds are showing extreme weakness. And generally, the bonds move. Uh, they, sh they generally move correlated to the market, but they're not perfect. But the fact that the bonds are showing a lot of weakness here, that weakness ends up permeating into the equity price. So the bonds are showing a lot of weakness here. We are at a record level of shorts in uh, treasuries. So this is not good. And then when you take a look at the junk bonds, they're also not showing strength. So just nothing really looks like the move can sustain itself. And in general, this is not the time, in my opinion, to you know, add to longs. It's the time to start shorting and leaning short and um, getting into longer term puts. But then, of course, intraday, day trading, anything goes, right? But we're going to see uh, basically how the market responds on Monday. Uh, this is you know, 420, major level of resistance, 421.25 is a gap that needs to be filled on the spy so we could end up going higher into that but 420 is a major major level of resistance in terms of the option premium as well so that is a option level of resistance and that level of resistance on the option market is causing a um a, a basically resistance in the equities market so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video um if you guys enjoyed please make sure to like comment subscribe do all that good stuff. And um, my internet is back. I will be live streaming and doing all that tomorrow morning. I hope you guys have a spectacular Sunday. And take it easy. Love you guys. Take care.